Hey, serverless friends. Welcome to the serverless on Azure YouTube channel. Um, I wanted to make this session because we have a lot of content for Azure Functions University now, and uh, maybe it's a bit too much to consume all at once. Uh, so I just want to give this session about um, um, some small tips and tricks how you can consume all the content. Um, so let's get rid of this and let's start with sharing my screen. Um, so if you're watching this, you're probably watching already via YouTube, so you've already found me, so that's great. Um, I definitely ask you to, uh, if you like the videos, please like them and also subscribe and tell everyone. Um, but maybe you didn't know yet that uh, all of our videos are using uh, chapters. So that's yeah, definitely one of the nicer things that YouTube offers. Um, so here you see all of our videos. Um, I also made quite um, a lot of playlists. So there's a like a general Azure Functions University playlist that contains all the videos for Azure Functions University. Um, but that also then uh, covers all of the different languages. So we have uh, .NET, but also if you scroll a bit further, we have then uh, TypeScript and PowerShell and so on. Um, but I'm also now adding some specific playlists specifically for .NET and for TypeScript and there will be for PowerShell as well, and hopefully for Python when we uh, start working on the lessons for Python. Um, but when you click on one of the videos, and I've already opened it right here, so this is the HTTP lesson 4.net, you can see here the progress bar, uh, it's cut up into different sections, and those are the chapters. So using these chapters, it's quite convenient to immediately see, okay, what, what is this chapter about? Because you can read uh, it in an overlay here. So this is the uh, lesson one, exercise one, creating an Azure Functions project. So it's very convenient to skip ahead to a section which is useful for you. So yeah, and when you're viewing the content on YouTube, uh, definitely have a look at the, um, at the sections here. Um, it also means that the chapters or sections are described here in the uh, description. So that's also another way to, to look at that. Um, so the other thing we have is the GitHub repository, the Azure Functions uh, University repo. And that's this link if you want to go there for yourself. Um, it's most convenient if you're just um, reading the content and reading the lessons, then I would say just use GitHub, uh, go straight to the lessons folder. There's also a link in the markdown uh, here as well to go to the overview page where all of the uh, lessons are and then there's all the different topics and then we have uh, for each lesson a link which points you to the right uh, lesson so in this case again it's the http trigger lesson in dotnet core and so these markdown files they are very nicely rendered here uh, on, on github um, we have included some internal links um, in this top section so again you can easily navigate uh, uh, through these markdown files. Uh, but now even GitHub also has these built-in table of contact uh, uh, functionality, uh, and that's even even nicer. So I'm very happy that they, uh, that they did that. So you can immediately go to a section of your interest. Um, so if you just want this to uh, read along and then um, do your own coding uh, to learn Azure Functions, then I think this works uh, perfect. Uh, but of course, you can also clone the entire uh, repository because there's also a lot of more information in there than just the markdown files because there's also source code in there. So I'll definitely recommend if you uh, are following our lessons, uh, clone our repository. And the easiest is uh, to get this green button to get the code. And what I usually do is I uh, copy this URL uh, and then I go to VS Code because that's what we use from all our lessons, because I think it's a very uh, beginner-friendly uh, programming environment. So this is uh, VS Code. Let me make it a bit bigger. Um, so now we need to clone the content of the repository to our local machine. And there are several ways to do that, but uh, I'm going to use this uh, command. I'm going to git clone, so the first one. Then I'm going to paste in this uh, git URL. And then it asks me, okay, so where do you want it? That's uh, somewhere in the temporary folder because yeah, yeah, I already have it, but I'm going to clone it again. Um, so let's use uh, this one, select repository location, and it will create a new folder 
and based on the name of the repo, so that, so that should be fine. So now it's cloning the entire repo, and it will uh, ask me, okay, do you want to open it? And yes, uh, let's open it. All right, so now I have uh, the whole Azure Functions University repo cloned on my local machine, uh, but there's quite a lot of content in there. Um, so, so there are some specific GitHub files and VS Code files. I'll uh, uh, mention the tour files uh, uh, in a moment. It already mentions here that, okay, uh, there are some code tour files. Uh, do you want to do something with it? Uh, not just yet, just a moment. I'll close it. Um, so all of the lessons are here. And if they are language specific, they are first in the language folder and then they're per topic. Um, yeah, but that means there's a lot of nesting, a lot of subfolders, and these are just the markdown lessons. Uh, but then next to the lessons, then there's a source code, and you probably are interested in the source code if you clone the repo. So again, if you look into the source code folder, there are different subfolders for each language, and then there are the different uh, projects in there for the different topics. Um, and in addition to that, there is a test folder, which usually contains uh, .htp files, which the REST client extension for VS Code can use uh, in order to make HTTP requests to your uh, local function. So if you just open this folder, it actually contains too much. Yeah, because I can imagine you just want to follow uh, one lesson and then you want to follow another lesson, uh, but I don't think you want to see everything all at once. Um, so that's why I've introduced workspaces. And workspaces is a concept that is built natively into VS Code. And it allows you to only open a subsection of folders into VS Code. So instead of showing everything, um, we can only show the folders that we're actually interested in. Uh, so if we open this workspaces folder, um, we see again it, it's divided by uh, the programming language. So if you want to look for workspaces for uh, .NET, uh, then we see quite some code uh, workspaces for all of the .NET lessons. So it's the idea that every lesson that we make, it will have its own workspace file. And when we open one of these files, so for instance, the HTTP lesson for .NET, and when we open the file, we see some, uh, some paths and some names, uh, but the most important thing is that we have a button here open workspace. Uh, so let's click that and let's see what happens. So if you studio code uh, reloads, and now when we look at the right here, we don't see the full content of the entire repository anymore. We now see HTTP.NET workspace. And uh, so let's let's first collapse it, this, this thing. Oh, that's, that's a bit too much. It also mentions code tour again. Well, again, uh, I'll get there in a moment. Uh, let's collapse these things. So this HTTP.NET workspace uh, contains a handful of folders and, and files, but not everything. It contains the markdown files, which describes the prerequisites. And so all of the .NET lessons will include the same prerequisites for where, where it describes .NET. Uh, and again, you're probably better off when you read this on, on GitHub um, because uh, this is not the easiest way to, to read it. Of course, you have the markdown preview as well, which makes it very nice to read. Um, but if it's just about reading markdown files, you should probably stick to reading it on, uh, on GitHub. So it's, it contains uh, the prerequisites description, uh, the lesson description, but then more importantly, it contains the folder where the source code is. And in this case, it's only the source code for the HTTP function. Uh, so I think this is nice to use workspaces because you're not overwhelmed by seeing all of these uh, different folders and, and files with, which are not useful to you because the repository will grow even more. Uh, so already now it, it spans three different programming languages and hopefully even more languages soon. Uh, so I really advise everyone to, if you want to follow the lesson, clone the entire repository, but then open a workspace that belongs to the lesson you want to follow. Um, so the nice thing is that this should then also uh, just work straight out of the box as long as you've installed the prerequisites. Um, so it should, uh, if you do a build now, 
you can choose which project you want to build. There are actually two projects. There's a lesson, uh, the demo project, which is this top one, and there's a homework project. So let's uh, build the lesson project. So now it's going to do a build and it's going to restore uh, the NuGet packages it's it's using because right now it's still complaining that it uh, can't build, can't find some things yet because we haven't downloaded all the packages, but now we did download all the NuGet packages. So now everything is, uh, appears to be working. And this uh, this this loading of the workspace is, is um, I think it's nice because you can open the workspace, you can go to this function app, which is a demo project. Uh, you build it, you can immediately start it. I'm going to do it now. I'm just going to press um, F5. So now it will start uh, at the local Azure Functions runtime, and it will start this HTTP function app uh, locally on my machine. And then I can use uh, another folder. This is the REST client test files, which contains a .htp file, and that contains the um, the endpoints which I can trigger uh, to test the, the demo app. Uh, so it's still uh, building. So now it's starting up the local Azure Functions uh, runtime. All right. So now it's available. There are uh, different endpoints there. Okay. So now it's ready. Um, so now I can click one of these endpoints in here. So let's do this one with the queries team. Make a request. And we get back the result. OK, that's, that's pretty nice. OK, let's uh, stop running and debugging this one. And then let's get back to the workspace overview. Um, because the last two folders are uh, then another project. If there is a homework assignment, uh, then there's usually also some uh, example homework. Uh, so this is a folder that contains a uh, sample homework solution. And then the last one is, I think, very nice because that contains the uh, code tour files. So if you haven't heard of, uh, of code tour, that is a very nice extension for uh, Visual Studio. Um, here's the description. Uh, so it's, it allows you to create a step-by-step yeah, -step guide through your uh, through your source code, through your project, which I think is uh, very helpful if you want to explain things. Um, so instead of just writing code comments and having these comments throughout your uh, source code, uh, you're actually putting those comments in a separate file, and those get loaded, and you can actually navigate uh, through your project uh, with this extension. So how does that look like? You actually don't need to uh, do anything with the content of these files. Uh, so that's why I put it in between brackets, because it's not really intended for you to, uh, to consume it like this. Because I, I can now click it, but this is how those files look like. And uh, it, it points to different source code files, and it has descriptions and stuff like that. But you don't need to know about it. Um, there is, if you have the extension and the extension is uh, recommended. So if you don't have it, you'll see a, a pop-up in Visual Studio Code that uh, if you want to install it. Uh, so if you don't have it, then please select yes, and then it will be installed. Uh, and then it will, you'll have this additional uh, menu item here uh, with the code tour. So here the ATP lesson has uh, uh, four uh, different tours, and the numbers then correspond with the uh, lesson exercises. Uh, so the first one is uh, uh, cre about creating a function app, and then it will um, highlight several parts so we can start this here. And then it will bring you to specific sections in the CS project file, uh, which explain certain elements of, uh, of that file. And now we can navigate uh, our, our project uh, with code tour. So now we can go to the next step, which explains something about the Azure Functions version. And the uh, next step mentions that we need to include this NuGet package. And the next file refers to uh, uh, the host.json. Um, so this is a way to, yeah, to, to navigate 
through your uh, through the exercises. Um, let's see, you can also uh, get rid of this if you want. So if you uh, so if, if you like this, yeah, please please let me know if you like this workspace because or code tours because not all of the lessons already have code tours because it is still yeah uh, quite a bit of efforts to to add them to all of them. Um, I do think it's a it's a nice option to have. Uh, here's another one where we look at the content of an Azure function. Uh, so it explains how uh, what the role of the attributes is. Um, uh, how can you name them? How can you use them? So I think this is a very yeah, user friendly way to to interact with the uh, with the demo project. All right. Uh, so that's the go tour section, and um, yeah, I think that's the, that's the things I wanted to highlight. Uh, so if you're done with YouTube and want to just read, then and definitely stick with the uh, the GitHub repo. Uh, which I think is uh, the most convenient. Uh, but then if you want more details and want to look at the source code, uh, then I would definitely recommend to clone the in entire uh, repository uh, and then select the proper workspace file, which is located in the workspace folder, and then the specific language. Um, and then Visual Studio Code will then reload and only show the uh, files which are used for that lesson. And then again, uh, the next step then will be to uh, make sure that all of the lessons have uh, code tours, uh, so you can really get a nice tour throughout the demo project as well. All right, so I hope this made it a bit clear how you can actually consume the content in a um, in, in a good way. And if you have any recommendations on how we can make this process even better, then please let me know. Bye.